This is episode two of the Angler's Den. So we are going to break down and discuss all of our fall tournaments. So we'll start off with Kentucky Lake. How do you think Kentucky Lake went, Dalton? It went way better than expected, actually. Um, so practice was kind of horrible. We drove, we got up at what, four in the morning. We drove straight down seven hours. We got on the water, and they're an hour back, so we got on the water about 10.30 after getting gas and stuff. And we're out there, and we're idling, just, we're just idling, kind of graphing, and getting our fishing licenses, actually. And I'm just, my card kept getting declined. The service sounded horrible. I had no service all week. Don't understand how kind of moody I got with no service. Couldn't get on my phone at all. And finally, I got enough service where I could buy my fishing license. So it was like 20 minutes later of idling. Marked like, I don't know, 10 brush piles. Or like, whatever. Never even... Practice. Never them. even practice them. Never even looked at them. Most the tournament, we ran around to like all these points and uh, what else? Humps, just looking for brush, rock, something like that. And we started off, and I actually did catch. Or I hooked something big on on the glide bait. I hooked something big, and that was about the cool story of the day until right at the end when we fished right by the ramp. We all caught a fish. Remember that? Yep, the we brush pile. Fish. Then day, well, the first official day of practice then was. A really long day. Um, what did we catch? I think one keeper all day, didn't we? Yeah, I think. The other thing is one keeper all day. We had three days of practice, and that day we had one keeper. It was really cool. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing was is when we were trying to break down Kentucky Lake, we were kind of like, all right, we're launching from Paris, so we want to stay within eyesight of the bridge because if you do any history on Kentucky Lake, a lot of tournaments are won they within are. eyesight of the bridge. So we were like, all right, perfect. We're going to, you know, try to we knew that it was like kind of the fall transition so they would not be set up on the primary ledges but they're still going to be offshore so we were looking at like and, river and channels we knew, we knew they were moving back too so Absolutely. we were following like those creek channels the humps i mean ditches drains everything back and just looking at a map really i would say yeah i think i think the mapping for sure helped us break down kentucky lake the most just because that's kind of how you technically fish mm -hmm. a TVA. Like you spend a lot more time looking at contour lines and, and where the right. river swings are. And and the biggest thing with fishing any TVA lake is making sure you're set up right where current could possibly hit yeah. your spot. Absolutely, that is the most important thing because that <laughs> creates hard bottom. Yeah, I think that is something that is overlooked by a lot of people that fish the TVA. Yeah, so I think like what? How many days of practice did we have? We had three, three official, but three. Then we had like three and a half. Yeah, yeah. like th three and a half days of practice, and I I think between three and a half days of practice, our boat collectively we had three people on the board uh, because it was a ACA Big Bass Bash event. So I think between the three and a half days of practice we had, I think there's one keeper every day. I think one, one keeper, keeper in the yeah. Boat I think every one day. keeper every day, and I think like what, two, three shorts, maybe. Right. Yeah. It was a long day. We caught a lot of catfish, though. I do remember in drum. We caught a lot of those. Oh, you don't want to talk about the Asian carp? Uh, I mean, <laughs> went on, he went on a streak there with he, Asian he, carp. He, he had a fun. he had a eight foot heavy rod with. 25 pound fluoro and a Daiwa Tatula 300. I mean, I found the biggest treble hook in my box. I put on an ounce freaking weight and those carps grass. But you learned that you had to peg the weight though. You had like, to peg it. In front of the, in between the knot and the weight because you learned through a lot of uh, breaking off and losing some tungsten weights that guess what? They're, uh, it's going to break because they pull very, very, very hard. Yeah. So uh, on to bass fishing. Um, yeah. I don't know. Practice kind of went like. Horrible. Horrible. I mean, like, I don't know if I can think of a worse practice, actually. And and the funny thing was, is everyone, when we get back to the house, like, we, we're staying with a bunch of freshmen on the team, and they're all like, oh, man, the sophomores are on them. Man, yeah, you guys are on them. You guys are on them. You're lying to us. And we're like, yep, you guys got us. We are on them. We're going to win the tournament. Just being as, as sarcastic as we can. Yeah. And I think... Uh, Day one, we kind of set out with a mission to like... And we had an early morning mission with that shell bed at first up on yeah. the island. And we had one four-pound smallmouth eat a mag draft there in practice. We saw it. it we legit saw it. It's probably four-pounder, yeah. wouldn't you say? Well, we got it in the boat. We didn't get it. Oh, yeah, we did get in the boat. I'm sorry. Yeah, we did. I was like, oh, I remember. Like, yeah, that was, that was actually the coolest part of practice. And we, we knew it was a morning spot, too. Yeah. And let's just say we had a fog delay. And the sun was high once they let us all go. And the morning was just, I don't know, they weren't set up there. No, they we were not. real quick that it was time to go. Yeah, I think, what do we spend, like 30, 40 if minutes? That, if that. Yeah, maybe 30 like, minutes. I think 30 about, but, and we ran back down. 
within eyesight of the bridge. I, I'm not going to really give too much juice there, but it is within eyesight of the bridge. I promise you can see the bridge. Absolutely. And we're fishing this one spot. I mean, it's a sneaky brush pile. I mean, if anyone listening could find this brush pile that we were fishing, not the one I caught about that's this fish off. Of. Oh, mind you this. This is about noon, one o'clock. Yeah, this o'clock. is about noon, one o'clock. We ran a ton of areas. Yeah, and we haven't caught a freaking darn fish yet. Yeah, so no, like fishing the boat. So, <laughs> so how would you, Dylan, describe to the, the viewers uh, what the temper and the... The Every of the boat was so I think the whole time down there on Kentucky Lake I almost think everyone was pissed off because first of all none of us had like cell service and like I don't know I think it was just like with the no catching fish and it was just I think there was a little bit of issues between other teams kind of not working together because it was their first time fishing so it's just there's a lot of tension at the house the which boats. was uh, which led to having tension in the boat in the boat like. Yeah. Even though, like, me, Dalton, and even Tonkel have fished plenty of times together. And we all get along perfectly. We're all good friends. I yeah, mean, it, it just, I I think, tournament, I like. One, at one point in time, it was the, about this <laughs> noon point, Dylan's starting a jerkbait, and I haven't seen one fish. I want to eat Dylan's jerkbait, and I go, Dylan, you got to put that, that jerkbait down, dude. Like, this is stupid. You keep throwing it, expecting one to eat it. And he goes, Dalton, what are you talking about? You're throwing a crankbait, and <laughs> one isn't eating yours either. I was like, yeah, but one's going to bite my crankbait. He goes, no one's going to bite my jerkbait so yeah we, we did again we yeah we we're kind of little budding heads but i think i think around noon yeah we we're fishing that brush pile we were fishing this one brush pile not not not, uh, not, not where we caught the, the eighth place fish on right. we were fishing a brush pile maybe 50 yards away from it and if anyone probably could find this spot it would be very impressive yeah, yeah it's it's not even on a map you can't even yeah. see it on a map like the way how we found that brush pile was we're literally dr- idling out just launched the boat, just drove seven or eight and a half hours, and we literally waypointed a dumb brush pile. And, and th- there is a contour rise on it, and, it, and it, it's hard bottom too. Like all the mapping said it was like eight feet around it, but it actually came up to six feet, and there's rock all yeah. around it, and the brush pile right There's a high of spot, it. and I mean, yeah, it I wasn't mean, just one brush pile. How many brush piles were there? There's probably three or four. There wasn't yeah. a ton on this spot. There was like three or four, I'd say, though. And they're definitely put there by crappie fishermen. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. But the spot just set up like it should have one. And we're like, all right, let's go to it. We never hit that spot at all throughout the day. And then we did catch one keeper out of it in practice on a spoon, if you remember correct. Yeah. We did. But not exactly where you caught not that exa- fish. Exactly. Not exactly where I caught this fish we're, we're getting to. But this one brush pile, we did actually, I, we lied earlier, we did fish that one spot in practice. It just it was like really close to the ramp. And we are fishing it and I catch a big catfish and I think someone had a bite or something. I don't yeah. Remember. And Dylan goes, Hey, there's a waypoint over here. Let's just go fish it real quick. It's literally right there. And we're fishing. And if you can imagine, we go to this, we're fishing it and we're all throwing, I think you were still throwing your jerk bait. I think at this point, uh, I could be wrong. I think I was throwing Carolina rig. Okay. He might've been throwing a Carolina rig. I, I, I really don't remember. I, I don't remember what Tonko was fishing either. He's yeah. he probably is underspent. He <laughs> loves that thing. But so if you can imagine at the front of the boat, we're all trying to look at the live scope, look and see where brush is. Yeah. There's Tonko on the left. I'm in the middle. Dylan's on the right. We're all casting at this brush pile. And I turn the live scope out to the right and I see just like a little bit of contour change and an obviously hard bottom. I did not see any fish and I throw here. You can, not this exact color, but, but a DT10. A DT10. I threw it out there. I mean, a bomb cast. And I'm working it down. And I start like, because what I've learned is I fish it kind of weird, my crankbaits. But like, if you vary your speeds, like you've been told to, but I was kind of fishing some kind of stupid Dylan saw it. Like a jackass. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just sitting there just burning it and like pulling, like, and then he goes, done it moving. I thought it was snagged for a second and then it started moving. I was like, I got another giant catfish. I got another giant catfish. And it comes up. <laughs> Dylan screaming. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little embarrassed on this part. No, it's funny. I mean, this is, but this it's is hilarious. The story that's awesome. Dylan's screaming. It's a nine pounder. It's a nine pounder. It's a nine pounder. And I didn't think it was a nine pounder, but I generally thought it was six something for sure. When it came out, I'm like, oh my gosh. It's on a crankbait. Don't, don't, don't come off that. I could win the tournament off this fish. I can win the tournament off this fish. And I'm, I'm just in my head the whole time. Like if this thing comes off, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. And we 
What? So what? Ha oh, here. This is where it gets really funny. I'm, I'm about to skip the best part of the whole story. So, so what happened was, is like I said. So there's Tonkel on my left. I'm the little Dylan's on my right. So Tonkel comes back behind me, getting, and he's trying to get the net. So Dylan couldn't just turn around because Tonkel's right there. He couldn't come towards me because I'm right there. And then in front of Dylan is my line. So Dylan had nowhere to step. This is the best part of the whole thing. So he's like freaking out. I'm like, Dylan, you got to get down, dude. I got, I, you got to get out of my way, dude. You got to get out of my way. And he's like freaking out. And I, and I did put a lot of pressure on Dylan. I will admit it. I was definitely scaring him. I don't know about he, scaring he, him. He, but. Was, he, was, he was yelling at me to get out of the way. It was, it was me, the water, and then just dropped to my knees. But the problem was... <laughs> that I had hooked myself. I was wearing flip flops. <laughs> I hooked myself in the foot <laughs> with a spook and your jerk bait. <laughs> and the jerk bait all at the same time. I, I, I have trouble hooks in my feet, and Dalton's got this monster fish hooked up. So I just did what I know what to do, and I just dropped into an armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Dylan was like doing a two tap on the front on the front deck. He's like, he can't figure out where to go. And I don't know what went through his brain, but his brain told him to step on a jerk bait and a spook, and that's exactly what he did. So it was really funny looking back at it, and I'm regretting that that was the only spot we did not record that day, too. Yeah. The only spot we did not record that whole day was that spot, because we're like, dude, we're wasting this SD footage and, or space, and we're not getting anything. We're, I mean, we were just, it was a bad yeah, and we all, and we, boat. And we also pulled up to the spot thinking, we're, oh, we're just going to make a few casts at it exactly. just, just so we don't have, like, you know, nightmares. Oh, man, we should have. We should have fished right. that spot. And then we got it in the boat. And, I mean, I when I'm telling you I freaked out, I definitely freaked out. I was screaming, hooting, and hollering. Everybody within a mile of the spot knew that I caught that fish, I'm pretty sure. Yep. And we put it in the box. And then what happened? You, I you lost a lot, I think. Yeah. You had a lot of bites that you didn't get. Yeah. Um, the, the spot was very weird because it was... It was, was everything there. It was set up on like... It was it was a like creek yeah it was a creek channel but it wasn't like marked out that was the, right. like like it was it I it was don't a even high know spot it was next a, to the creek channel kind yeah of, like it was, but it had like it had like rock on the ledge kind of it wasn't a ledge on, but like on the drop on, on the, the on the, the drop were, there at was, the top there's rock and brush piles and like fishing line everywhere the amount of catfish rigs we've pulled up th with their plugs with their carolina rigs Everything. or jigs chatterbaits chatterbaits i mean every i mean in it was <laughs> we did our we did our service yeah i think like, i think we yeah. had like one of those f code release bags that we never turned in right. um we had almost half full with fishing line um beer sinkers cans, beer cans i mean lures i mean what we caught a broken 6xd we caught I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we we caught a sink that was probably like I don't know 14, 14, 15 inches soaked up in water. So that spot was just I don't know. There was there's a lot to fish for, but you just it was so hard to get your bait down there long enough to get bit because you just kept getting hung up. Like I think yeah. how many times did I break up? Or like all of us. All of us. Yeah, we broke up. I think it was like if you got a cast in without getting hung up, it was like well, you we were probably hyped. lost the, at least ten DT tens that day. Probably, yeah, if I had to guess. Yeah, we yep. lost a lot. And then we we drove back and we weighed that fish in, and it was a five thirty seven, which it, it which I swear it had a six pound body. It yeah, it was a very skinny, sad fall transition fish, but it made sense the reason it was there. Every, like I told everyone I got lucky, which I did get lucky and I fished spot in practice. I, I I did get lucky and very fortunate, but it does make sense the fish was there and the reason he was there and what he bit, why he bit it, everything did make sense, but we did not have the practice to expect that. That's no. for sure. And the, and the oh, funny shit. thing was, is the night before, one of our buddies goes, oh, man, you're on him. You're going to freaking catch him tomorrow. And then Dalton goes, if I catch him. So our buddy Colin is literally going, oh, man, you're going to freaking catch him. You're going to catch him up. And and then Dalton, as a joke, goes, man, if I catch a five-pounder, because there's a pool kind of where we're staying at. He's like, if I catch a five-pounder, I'm jumping in that pool, and I'm doing belly flops. Doing every, for every pound, five pounds are over i would do that many belly flops yeah well i mean that was just us talking out of our our yeah, butts for sure that that night it was but... me trying to prove to him like dude i am not hiding anything from you yeah like, i'm not hiding anything from you at all like i we're not on him. no yeah and it was just it was just funny um i still owe him belly flops colin i know you're listening i owe you belly flops I know. um sorry. day two oof 
That Oof. was that was a fun day. So we had to throw Berkeley baits only, and the first spot we pulled upon, I broke a rod first cast. Yeah, snapped in half, and then I don't know. We weighed in one keeper that day. We yeah, went for barely anything on a Fritz side. Yeah, but day two just I we fish the same stuff, fishing Berkeley baits, and I'm not trying to hate on Berkeley baits. We didn't have any going down there. Yeah, that was, that was at our huge disadvantage. We didn't have any. It was our fault. We didn't buy the dredgers. We didn't buy any. What, we had some stunners and... Yeah, it was... What, some thunder... Or not thunder. I think on a Carolina sorry, rig, I threw a, I threw a hit worm and a the chigger chicken, craw. Yep. Um, yeah, it was... It, the problem was that day two, like... The night after day one, we were like, oh my God, we got to go get Berkeley baits. Like, this is... We need to we, go get Berkeley I mean, baits. We were running everywhere, we're looking, calling we everywhere. We called within, within, miles, yeah, within like an miles. hour drive of Kentucky Lake, Paris Landing, asking for Berkeley crankbaits, and nobody had anything but like flatworms and like jigger crows. Might have had like some flicker shads. Or yeah, something like, like not nothing that nothing that we that we needed. So like. I can't blame Berkeley and I can't blame AC. It was no, just, it was, it was our all, fault. it was, our it was fault. definitely we all, of, yeah. So day two was just rough just because we couldn't, we didn't have the right baits and we didn't want to, like, you know. But let's finish off day one. You, you fished the whole, I set out the, the last session just because I thought the points worked weird and I couldn't wait another fish that day from what I, my understanding was, but I misunderstood the rules. So you had that last period to yourself running the boat live scope i think where's one more keeper caught like almost three pounds and you lost one I think. oh yeah so um yeah i think we um at this point kind of late in the day after we've ran through so many crankbaits me and tonkel uh we were like you know what let's uh drag some carolina rigs um so we dragged that for a while i don't think we got bit really on a carolina rig and then like right before we left we were like you know what let's just put on a chatterbait and just kind of try to like slow. I think Tonko picked up his crankbait again. Oh yeah, yeah. Tonko picked up his crankbait and did he caught one? He caught like a two eighty nine. or Yeah, like two eighty nine. And then uh, I was just throwing a, a chatterbait and just kind of slow dragging it on the bottom. And I don't know. It was just not my day. They were knocking it though. They were knocking it like crazy. I mean, it I was just. Like, I was watching. No, it was. It was definitely they were knocking it. It was just. I don't know. I like. I like to say some days are your days. Some days are not your days. And that day was not my day. But at the end of the day, though, we managed to catch an eighth place fish, which was. So, can I ask a question, Don? So you said that was not your day. Like every every fisherman, I think has. It was like we're about to get into Dardanelle, and that was definitely not my day. What is your way out of that, that not your day? Um, biggest thing, especially to anybody that's fishing with the co, whether you're the boater or you're the co, my biggest advice is let's say you're watching your co or vice versa, your boater, just snatching them and you're throwing the same darn lure and you're casting on the same spots and he's like, man, come here, cast through this grass and do it and it's just not working out for you. The biggest thing is, is I'd probably say is just keep your head in the game don't give up. Don't get pissed off. Just continue just to focus and be supportive for your teammate. Like, be just, right. just because yeah. it's in bass fishing, especially between me and you, I think we've both found that, like, as long as one of us are positive, we manage to bring the positivity out of the other person. Right. And, yes. like, one motto I was going to say that we kind of started this year that I absolutely love <laughs> is, is funny. it is, I think, the best motto ever is we're leaving the spot with more weight than we can yeah, so I, I i think uh that motto is great for any angler anywhere around the country whether you're in a right. lead series pro right. all the way to a junior in uh the it junior just, division it just keeps you rolling you're like this next spot i could be leaving with more weight than what i came whether that's a point zero one pound call or that's a five pound call absolutely so, yeah, I mean, I think, like, any tournament that we fish, like, even, like, the six-pan tournament is kind of, I think, where things kind of started. I don't know. But that was right after you caught that last keeper, or that, not the last keeper, but the under that called. Yeah. And I go, Dylan, one way to look at this is we're leaving more weight, or we're leaving the spot with more weight than what we came. And then, then the next time we pulled up to, Dylan made, like, a, a very crucial, like, 0.2-pound call. Which ended up which winning was, the tournament. Exactly. So. so. Exactly. But I, that's that's enough about Kentucky. Like, yeah, so I, let's move on to Darnell. This is a Lake Darnell. Um, I was very very excited for Lake Darnell just because I grew up on the chain of lakes and 
I just know how bad of a fishery the chain of lakes is. So I was like, all right, perfect. A Grimmy tournament. This is like, this is, I love this. Close to home. Kind yeah, of. this is close to home. We're up shallow. I knew there's like, it was just going to be set up just like how I like it. And especially in the fall. So I'm like, I'm just going to have a buzz bait in my hand all day long. Right. And, um, you know, I think we showed up to practice with super high expectations. Uh, I never had the opportunity to fish Lake Dardanelle last year. Dalton did. And uh, he was telling me that there was, like, a lot of bank grass, but there was no really grass in the lake. Yeah. I, I didn't find any. Or he couldn't find any. And so come this time around, like, we we kind of, like, checked up, I think, one or two spots, and we were like, Dalton's like, dude. That, the first spot we pulled up on. Yeah. I, mean, I think Dalton's like, what the heck? This is not what I remember right. at all. So, like, right away, kind of, when that situation went down, we kind of took almost a lot of what Dalton's previous knowledge of Lake Darnell was, just throw it out the window. Gone. See you later. And um, we were like, all right, perfect. Let's go check this one area out. So... We get there, and you know, I think it was wind was howling right into uh, this one point with some bank grass, and uh, Dalton's hucking around a chatterbait, and then boom, catches a little dink. We were like, like my first cast. Yeah. When we get there. Yeah. So we we're like, hey, let's fucking go. Exactly. We haven't. <laughs> I mean, it's not anyone who has fished at Darnell knows like just catching a fish is not easy. Yeah. Like, so it, it's not easy. So out there. so we were, so we were like, all right, let's go. Like it's we a caught good a sign. yeah, we caught a fish. And there's grass in this area, so like we're like, this is this is awesome. And what about the bait? Let's hear about the bait. Oh, everywhere. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, to I was like, <laughs> just on the all the shad that were there. It was crazy, and so I was like, all right, perfect. This is kind of setting up to be like a perfect time to like you know throw a buzz bait, get some crucial reaction strikes. Mm -hmm. So um, we ended up practicing that spot for I think what like. Two or hours, I think, the an hour. Bay. Yeah, it was a big bay. Like it, we weren't fishing like a spot or down right. one bank for two hours. It was like this big bay that we were breaking down for almost about two mm -hmm. hours and really trying to get a get a good idea of what's going on. And um, I think how many times, how many fish did I catch? How, I I don't think I caught that many fish, but I but got there was blown a lot up. Of two to three pounders that, that we like, just saw because the right. water was clear, like like surprisingly clear like for an arc. Yeah, deep. for like. Lake Dardanelle. I Dardanelle mean, if you do any was research on Dardanelle. You know, it, you go, you're going there, and you can stick your finger in the water and probably not see. Yeah. So it was like so. Right away, we were like, all right. So we're clearly around the right area where we're seeing grass, we're seeing a ton of bait, and we're getting blown up. Like this is awesome. And I think we ran it like a couple area. Like we fish a little area, get blown up, and I'm like, all right, let's let's try to replicate this little spot onto many different various. And we kept we kept doing it. And, and we, we kept like, getting bit. Going good. And yeah, it, it, it was good. We we found a spot that was, I don't know. We made five casts and there was five fish. We didn't catch five fish, but yep. But we saw the potential for sure. And so like day one, like day, day we one, we only had two days of practice. Yeah, we only had two days. Of practice, so like sure. day one was just phenomenal. Lights out. We were like, this is awesome. And the funny thing was, is we didn't catch a single fish on a chatterbait the rest of the week. Nope. <laughs> we I, I don't think we could that practice day. Did we? Um, get bit on anything else? I'm trying to think. I don't think Maybe so. Maybe like a wacky worm or something. Maybe, but I think that was more day two where we kind of started like, all right, the buzz bait clearly works. Let's try to find a different pattern yeah. and let's try to find something that's... A plan B to a plan C to a plan D. Plan yeah, e. so, yep. so we were really, we were like, all right, this is awesome. And we're talking to our buddies that are down there and they're like, dude, like we're only getting bit like three times and in a whole day. A buzz bait too. And nobody's, they, and then like we talked to some kids at the ramp and they're like, man, this place sucks. Like I can't get bit at all. And then let alone a buzz bait. And we were like, Dude, this is crazy. We were so confused. Yeah, we were like, are we on to something that no one else is really I mean, on? We, we don't really fall in the, doc, in the doc talk either, but, like, this was truthful. Like, everyone's yeah. being honest. Like, you yeah. can tell. Yeah. And um, so, I don't know. I think day two, we kind of just ran stuff, and we found fi how to catch some fish, flipping some, like, like chigger craws and stuff like that, square flipping bills. a jigs, throwing a square bill, throwing a wacky rig. So we yeah. were like, all right, awesome. And we found, like... Three really good high percentage areas that we actually got bit lots of times and that we f could hypothetically catch some quality bass right. come tournament day. 
and um, day two went phenomenal. And I think like we did, we ran that almost all day, right up until we had to go to the meeting. And I think right before we left for the meeting, I was like, we had this one bay that was like, I mean, loaded. So I was like, yo, Dalton, let's just go quickly check. I mean, we make three forecasts. If they're still there, we start there tomorrow morning. And Dalton's like, fair enough. So we show up and <laughs> I think, I, I think first cast. I think I, first I cast. They get blown up by a three pounder, and I think we put, poked up the trolling motor. We're like, oh my god, Let's like, go. Go. like this is this is craziness. Like, and and we didn't really hook any of them because we just kept letting them, you know, blow up and just like not fight them. What I think the craziest thing about this spot was was we didn't see a boat all week. I, I mean, across the lake. We're not even talking the spot. I mean, within eyesight, we didn't see a boat there. It's like how. How is there no one in here? Yeah, like, the whole and, time. And I hate to say it, it sticks out like a sore thumb kind of on the map a little right. bit. And so, um, like, going into day one, I mean, our confidence levels were super high. I was like, it's 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 hopefully going to go down. We're not thinking we're on the winning fish. Absolutely not. But we're thinking, hey, if we're getting blown up as much as we have been getting blown up, if we can catch five 12 inch with 12 or it's 14 four, there, five 14 inches we're like i'm like odds are we're probably top 15 if not top 10 like right. realistically so i'm like a top 10 finish is phenomenal so right. come come day one it was cold and it, it cold was Friday. windy it was colder in arkansas than it was michigan that day to yeah. give anyone a perspective of how kind of cold it was i think it was like 50 here and it was like 42 there it yeah was, it was cold. It was cold for Arkansas. It was blowing. I mean, I have no clue. I don't Out even want. North. I mean, I don't even know. How, I don't even want to give a random. I I want to say twenty mile an hour plus. No, it was. I remember looking at my wind finder that I used for St. Clair, and it's always accurate. And it said like twenty two. Yeah. And but I don't remember what the gusts were. There was gusts though, but a constant twenty two out of the north. It was miserable, and it was cold. I was bundled up like it was Ozarks, mm -hmm. you know. And so, day one, I mean, we literally rolled up to the spot, and I mean, like, with super high hopes, and we're just feeling amazing. Like, right. and then I think we started fishing, and then the first little section, we didn't get bit, so we were like... Maybe they move back. Maybe, maybe they, they move back. back. It's colder. They move thicker in the grass. Right. And that's kind of exactly what they yeah. did. So, like, the right... The bait was loaded in I there, mean, like, but popping like, like crazy. I mean, like more than before like absolutely the, the bait wasn't even out where we started and we're like okay and then we saw the bait and we moved up in there and i think that's what really keyed us in for day one yeah um first things first i think i get blown up miss one get blown up again miss one you get blown up you miss, miss one them. i catch one and we're like all right cool like this yeah. is this is craziness like, like first 10 minutes of really fishing of yeah exactly we so we're them. like this is phenomenal and, and uh i think right we after kept that missing them. yeah we kept missing i think like three fish passed we we missed and then probably the fourth was very there's a lot of sadness if i think we got uh, there, the sadness story. there was a lot of sadness so um <laughs> there's this clump of grass at the top of the surface that's kind of like uh, it was a little isolated mm -hmm. and i saw some bacon pushed around right up by the grass patch so i was just like yeah cast my buzz bait right there do, 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 do. Doosh! and i mean this thing came out of the water it's still clear in the bay because it's protected a little bit and the grass is kind of protecting a little bit from getting blown out mm -hmm. so hard so i think that's how we had that little early morning window and um this thing blows up on it and me and dalton are seeing this clearest day this grass patch is 10 feet away from us i mean it's like not <laughs> far bad. like we're right on top of this fish this thing blows up and we are looking at this thing, and it is clear as day, three plus. I'm not saying it was a four pounder. I'm just saying like a three plus pounder on Lake Dardanelle is a quality, quality fish. And um, the problem was is I saw my menace sticking on the outside of his mouth, and my blade, it was an LS Lures buzz bait, my blade was in that fish's mouth. I have never done that. I have, I have fished with a buzz bait for many years and i've done very well with the buzz bait in tournaments yep. and uh, i've never experienced a fish blow up and eat the blade of the buzz bait that so. was it was sad I, I mean i don't i don't know what we could have done really yeah about that fish i mean there was nothing we could have done and but, i mean we fought it for i think what like 10 50 like almost it, it, hold, it held on like honestly it. like 15 seconds like we're fighting this thing and like it's just like How i don't know pull a fish into a boat that doesn't have a hook 
it just it just eventually came off. Right. So we were like, oh, that's heartbreaking. We only have one fish in live well, and we just lose a three pounder, and we've yeah. lost how many fish on a buzz bait, like yeah. blown up and missed it. So we were like, these fish are acting funky because they were blowing up and hitting it good practice day. So I think right after that, what, Dalton? We catch one. Caught one on a swim jig. Yeah, he caught one on a swim jig. I think I got caught. Uh, a couple shorts, I think. After yeah, a couple that. shorts. And then we we ran then, and then we ran up to another spot we had, and we ran up to the spot, and I started throwing a square bill. Yep. And nothing, nothing, nothing. Maybe caught a couple shorts. Pulled out a wacky worm. Dylan's flipping the bank grass, just like I'm throwing down the edge of the bank grass, and Dylan's flipping the bank grass. Threw down with a wacky worm. I caught what, like two and a half. Like another good one. Yeah. And this is quality. like 11 o'clock. And I want to clarify something for some of these Michigan listeners that may have never been to Dardanelle or these Indiana listeners that may have never been to Dardanelle. Like here in Indiana, when you go to Lake James and you go to Diamond Lake, when you go to Juneau, when you go to these lakes in Michigan and Indiana, you're used to catching 20 plus fish a day, like having a good day out on the water. Dardanelle, five fish a day is something. Like, yeah. That, like, it's not an easy task to go out there and catch fish. It is not at all. Especially that time of year. Especially time of year with the cold front, with the wind. It was tough. And we were like, okay, this is cool. We got three fish. One's okay. The other two, they're good if we catch a five-pounder. Yeah. And we ran back to the spot, and it, I, I it mean, just, it, it got poop in there. It turned into chocolate milk. I mean, that's quick. came by and... They Drop the bomb. Change that. I think it was just so <laughs> consistent. I mean, that's what I really think caused it. It was, I mean, I think it was heartbreaking. Just like we rolled up to the spot, like still having so much faith, knowing that there's so many fish there, and it just did not pay out. I, I it was just the wind changed from kind of being a little protected, still getting wind into it. Don't get me wrong, but it was just not blowing directly into it. And roughly right around 10, 30, 11, when the wind switched. And picked up more. It was getting pounded. And mind you, the how to kind of clarify how strong the winds were, I had to drive the 21-foot Ranger at like 22 miles an hour just to keep the nose up. Did I not? I mean, yeah. trolling motor <sighs> about fell off. I mean, it was Yeah, I think, I think the first day, the, the, the TH Marine safety harness yeah, thing. Yeah, the... The sc- screws just came undone. Like, I don't know. Like, oh, what do they call that? The, I forget what. Yeah. The troll tamer. The yeah, troll the troll tamer. tamer. If anyone knows what a troll tamer I mean, what that is, I want you to come try and rip it out of a boat. You would have to be King Kong, I'm pretty sure. And. It was it, it just, was crazy. I think like day one, especially like only managing to fish, finish with three fish because we didn't really have anything going the rest of the day. Didn't really catch anything. The mentality went way down, especially for me. Yeah, things kind of dropped drastically downhill. We were cold. We were wet, and uh, it's just every spot that we thought was good, the water went from clear bait popping to muddy, no baits popping, and it's just howling like we couldn't really. I don't even, we couldn't fish our spots because it was just all chocolate milk, so. See, that's what I kind of think I regret not doing that tournament was actually just fishing that spot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because, like, those fish, where are they going to go? They're going to go out into more poop water where there's no grass no, or exactly. stay in the grass where there's poop water. And we were not smart in that one, I don't think, and we should have just probably stayed to where we are or to where we were and just have grinded I mean, we ha- we would have to be okay with like not catching a fish for an hour, yeah, or even have a month. No, we'd abs- have to be okay with it, and we weren't, and we got greedy, and I think that's what really. Because we we were, I think I think suck. our mentality like we were just so used to getting bit like crazy. I think like day one and day two of practice, we got bit over twenty plus times both days. So we were like, all right, let's just keep yep. running different spots. We're gonna we're gonna run into them. Just keep just keep going, just keep going, and uh, that was not the right choice. I think. Yeah. I think that bit us in the butt really, really yeah, hard. And I think what we were really dumb about was not thinking through the cold front conditions, and I think that's also what screwed us was we didn't think through it. Like I said, we didn't slow down. Like, okay, it's a fall. It's like the first cold snap of the fall in Dardanelle. Something's going to change. Like, yeah. They're not going to just keep biting the buzz bait. They're not going to keep doing these things that they were doing when it was warm, and we didn't slow down make the right adjustments in it. It definitely burns me because that was my worst finish in my career ever. Yeah, but same here. At least, at least we learned from it, and 
and know I'm what to do next time. And if something like that were to happen again, we know what to do. Absolutely, I and, like and, I, and I'm so. tr- and I am truly grateful for having such a horrible finish. And as crazy as that sounds, I think that was. I think that was the fuel to the fire that w- me and you kind of put into ourselves come fall. Because when we got back from Lake Dardanelle, fished. we fished. We fished more than you could imagine. I think we went like from right when we got back mid-October to the almost up. Uh, middle of November. Like almost, almost up to middle of November just because it got too cold and things went downhill yeah, from that no tournaments really yeah either too. but we fished every tournament that you could find within like an hour mm-hmm. and we just grinded i mean to put it like i don't know we, we just we were hungry we were like that this we can't end the season on this we gotta yeah. go do something and cool. especially that was our last major tournament before toho that's not good more more uh, right. mortality going into like toho the national yeah the so national championship we did end up winning we had a really good weekend where we won the one tournament that we just talked about in six man, and then the next day we went to Benton Harbor and we got second in Big Bass in it. So it definitely helped change things around, put good vibes in our head, good vibes mm-hmm. in the boat, and prepare us. Yeah, but and I, I like I said, that was that tournament. I think it was, was our fault. it was our fault, but I think more importantly, I think that tournament is going to play a huge role going into next season. For it's sure. just because. It you learn a lot from mistakes and you can't yep. succeed without having mistakes so right. like i said i'm i'm grateful for yep it needed to happen it needed to happen it needed to happen y- so. you also get humbled yep and you just it makes you not a, not everyone can catch them right. every day that's right. that's for sure so i think that's kind of a wrap on your fall tournaments Let's kind of talk about, you know, kind we'll, of expect, we'll expectations it. going into Lake Toho for the national championship. Expectations. I don't know what I expect from it, for sure. Um, I expect to have fun, and I think that's where I'm going to leave it. I expect to have fun. I, I know what I'm hoping for in terms of a bite. I'm hoping for it to be kind of more of an offshore kind of deal, mm-hmm. than flipping in pads which I think you can catch them every way. But for sure, I'm hoping to it'll be more of an offshore deal, more of, because that's my style, that's my comfort zone. But I don't, I don't know why, I, I, don't, I don't have an expectation of where to finish. I mean, I know what I want. Obviously, you want to win the thing, don't want to remember second, for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, it'll be fun to experience. Oh, Dylan's always talked so highly about it, and I've never been, so. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've had, uh... I've had the opportunity to uh, fish Lake Toho last year in February, and I uh, that was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, Lake Toho, if anyone's been to the Harris Channel Lakes, complete polar opposite of freaking Lake uh, um, Lake Toho is p- complete polar opposite of the Harris Channel Lakes. Instead of like a lot of tournaments are one like offshore fishing, like shell, hard bottom, which you can do that on Toho and the Kissimmee Chain. Don't get me wrong, but I think a lot more tournaments are won fishing, a lot more vegetation, grass, and um, up shallow fishing pads, and you see your more typical Florida style, I think, at Lake mm-hmm. Toho. So so my expectations come uh, January is I expect a lot of those fish to be pre-spawn. Yes, there will be fish on beds, absolutely. Yes, there will be post-spawners because it is Florida. They start spawning in December. Yeah, they're about to spawn. Yeah, they're like, it's crazy to say. (laughs) Um, They're about to start spawning. But, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I think if we have a lot of, like, you know, warmer nights, warmer days, and um, mm, having a full moon sometime in the first week of January, that will push a crazy amount of fish up shallow um that would be probably one of the first major waves of a spawn starting around january i think is when that big first push of spawning fish go up shallow are we going to target spawning fish not necessarily that's not what we're going to go look for but i'll tell you what if we're up shallow and we're putzing around you know just sitting there on a locked on a bed yeah exactly so like we're not necessarily going spawn fishing i think what realistically we're gonna do is you know um i don't even know how to put this it's kind of like it's kind of like um a strategized junk fishing if you kind of like you know, it's so hard to describe. I it's know so hard to describe. It's like like some, I like some baits that I really want to throw, 
at um, Lake Toho is obviously um, throwing. I want to throw some crankbaits. I want to throw some Carolina rigs. Um, I want to go up shallow, maybe throw some glide baits, um, some speed worms, wacky rigs, that whole assortment of stuff. Just because that's it's it's Florida in in January. Any anybody can catch them any different way. That's the thing. I don't think there's one technique that's gonna flat out catch them more than any other technique. One expectation that I don't think we talked about is the bags. I think we're gonna see some bags dropped that tournament. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm gonna drop a bag, but I'm saying there's going to be a I'm gonna guess a dozen bags throughout the tournament, over 26 pounds, I would say. You think that crazy? 25, 26 pounds, 100%. I, I genuinely think so, just because. Well, it the is a three-day tournament. Toho, that is very fair. The thing, uh, what I've seen on Toho is there's a lot of four to seven pounders. Mm -hmm. So, that just helps, I think. When when yeah. you put the best of the best in college fishing, which the college fishing is not up to this. The level of the opens, the Toyota series, the elites, elites, the BPT, BPT the NPFLs. It's not up to those standards at all. But when you're putting the best of the best in college fishing, which these kids are about to go to these places, absolutely, and their dreams and their hungry are for these places. Because let's face it, at the national championship, there's less of those kids that have no idea. Like when you show up to a college tournament, there is a group of kids that have no idea what they're talking about. And how to fish, or, or like, even it, how to a run fact. a I'm boat. Not exactly. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings here. I'm saying this. It, it's a fact, and I think we see it in, in even in the Toyota series and the Opens. I, yeah. I, I think we still see it, and even in the Elite series, I think we see it. But when you eliminate those guys to fifty boats, now down to like three boats, they got lucky and qualified, and all these kids deserve their spot at the national championship, and they're all hungry to win it. I think we're going to see some bags dropped mm -hmm. for sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, even last year in February, like end of February, tail end of February, where typically the, it's tail end of the spawn and you're kind of looking more of like a shad spawn sort of deal and bass are typically lighter than they are all year. Yes, you are going mm -hmm. to see crazy big bags. Because they'll, they'll be filled with eggs when we go now, too. Yeah. Some of them will be. So, yeah, Absolutely. those, those four-pounders are going to be six-pounders. Yeah, because so. um, the kids that won it, what, day, final day, they cracked like 26, 27 right. pounds. And that's what I truthfully love about this place we're going to is we can catch 18 pounds on day one, and we're not out of it. We didn't shoot ourselves in the foot, and mm -hmm. I like that. Just because on, say, for the Bassmaster Pick, Pickwick tournament, you caught – I'm going to say nine pounds on day one. Like, you caught a limit, nothing crazy big. You were you're, out of it. You're like, done. Like, you're, you're done. You're done. You're Absolutely. It. And what I like about this tournament is you can catch, like, an average bag, which I'm guessing is that 15 to 18-pound bag is what I'm going to guess is going to be the middle of the pack kind of bag. Really? I'm going to guess. Or I don't know about middle of the pack, I, I, but, like. I'd say around 12 pounds. Okay. It's Florida. Okay. So, maybe. <laughs> Okay, so 15 pounds will probably have you in the top 40. Yep. You're still not out of it in the top 40. Oh, absolutely not. Right. You catch 15 pounds day one, mm -hmm. day two, you come crack 30 pounds. Hey, you're hollering right. at the leader. You're like, hey, I'm coming for you. So what so, day do we get down there? With the, so Tournament starts 9, 10, 11. The 7th, I would think we get down there, or the 6th? 7th would be our official day one okay, practice. Okay, so we'd have to get down there in the 6th. So we'll be down there in the 6th of January, and I, I don't know if – I, I don't know if there's any more that. What are you trying to get? Yeah, like, what are you trying to get? Expectations that, that? that I could have other than just. We'll find out January seventh. Not what the expectations not are. Not necessarily. Really is what I think. Yeah, absolutely. Not necessarily expectations. Just like kind of, you know. What you hope. And yeah. What you, how you see it going, kind of. Absolutely, and like my biggest thing is I love fishing in florida all, all of them have a inside joke if you if you go back I, no one's going to but if you go back and watch uh me weigh in day one of the national championship i kind of had no clue what to say so i was just like you know this is cool i love florida no, no <laughs> as a as a viewer perspective and we do have video of this if anyone cares you could uh, reach out to me or whatever we have video footage of it uh, Dylan's on stage and he had a good bag he was sitting what, 20th? top 20 okay, yeah yeah 20th and it was we we're really happy for him and he gets on the stage and he goes 
he talked about his day, which is he did a great job doing that. And then he stops for a second and he's like, do I keep talking? Like you can see it in his head. You go to do I keep talking or is it time to sign off? And he goes, I love Florida. And this- we all died laughing. We we're like, he's going to do good tomorrow <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, his- the biggest thing is, is going into the national championship. Uh, I'm bringing good wacky hooks this time. <laughs> I had, showed you that. yeah. Dalton showed me some <laughs> some uh, good wacky hooks, and uh, that's for sure. Because uh, day two, uh, we managed to lose. I don't know, probably I'd say anywhere between eighteen to twenty one pounds right at the boat. That's so sad. Just having crappy, shitty hooks. So I have been. I've never had a tournament kind of leave its mark in my mind more than this event. So I I don't need, like we're signed up for the Bassmaster events, which I'm I can't wait to you know go strive to qualify for the Bassmaster um, National Championship, and and then we we're about to sign up the 11th for the MLF yeah, events. So days. I can't I can't wait to try to requalify for the National Championship. Yep. But there's no other tournament in mind that I have more scarred in my mind than that event. So I just, I just, We're I'm starting itching. off with the buddy stuff. Yeah, so. That would be fun. Nope. Yeah. I don't I'm, know. I'm hoping, and this is genuine hope, that one of the two of us, if not both of us, break our PB that yep. week. Mm-hmm. For sure. I've never, and my my biggest tournament PB is a six and a quarter caught at Lake Toho, so yeah, I can. That's bigger than my tournament PB. My tournament PB is five. 40 something yeah like, i don't have a big tournament pb so so hopefully we both do it yeah so hopefully we can both crack it it's nothing outlandish you yep. know so yeah hopefully I, don't just catch us a 12 and i'll catch like a 12 pound <laughs> it's just the edge model just <laughs> like ah, i got you but uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's about it on today's podcast. It was just, we kind of wanted to talk about a little bit about, you know, our, our fall tournaments. I know that we didn't really post and talk a, lo- a lot about our fall tournaments just because I, th- I think we had such high expectations for ourselves and we kind of are like, all right, we did we did like shit, so we're going to go out and we're just going to grind. We're just going to get right. better. Like, and I did post about that on my Instagram and Facebook where I said, I want to do a recap of this Kentucky Lake soon, so we apologize that it is now. But Mm -hmm. um, just like Dylan said, we did awful, and we were like, it's not time to do a podcast. It's time to get our heads back in the game and grind it out. So yep. So now that we have some time, we're gonna we're gonna post some new videos on the channel, some some tournaments. We're gonna post more podcasts every Thursday, hopefully. Theoretically, every Thursday moving right. forward, obviously breaks coming up, and me and Dalton are going to be here to film them. But we should have almost every Thursday moving forward, especially after the national championship, uh, a podcast dropping. Right. So that'll be exciting for the viewers, and as well as we'll be uploading tournament finishes, tournament videos. Mm-hmm. We're going to be uh, a lot more present on the social media side, yep. whether it's Facebook, Instagram, oh, YouTube. Um, Spotify yep. will be uploading like crazy 2024 and we can't wait to you know get it it's started a new, it's a new journey for us too which yep. leads us into our next point which I think Dylan and I both want to talk about a little bit is we just want to thank you guys and like we can't thank you enough for yeah the support we we did the first one going on a hope and prayer that everything would go right and we we get the views and we I don't know we just did it right and it was very confusing to start at first, and we, we had plans to do it, and we never did, but the support we had behind it mm-hmm. was incredible, and I can't thank you guys enough for watching, listening, giving us some feedback, helping us a little bit, just talking to us, and really letting us know what we need to do better, what we did good, and kind of what you want to see going forward. So we can't thank you guys enough for the Absolutely. support, for sure. I think uh, me and Dalton both had people that have reached out that we haven't talked to in, I think, a while, a very long time, that people are like, oh, man, I watched your podcast. It was awesome. And it's just, it makes us feel really good about ourselves, right. and and it makes us want to continue to film these podcasts yeah, for you viewers. Exactly. And it, it really helps us out, too, because it, it's just a positive thing going in our head. It's it's getting us away from the school and all kinds of stuff like that. And yeah, finals week. It just it's it really it's sit down, sense. talk, fishing, yeah. and hopefully I don't know. This makes somebody's day. They're dri- they had a shitty day at work and they're driving home and they put this on. I don't know, yep. but that's it for this week's podcast. We'll see you next week. But folks.